Hey guys, I am Derek. Welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the capital asset pricing model, CAPM. In the early 1960s, three finance researchers, Sharp, Trainer, and Lintner, developed an asset pricing model that measures only the amount of systematic risk a particular asset has. They noticed that most stocks go down when interest rates go up, but some go down a whole lot more. They reasoned that, if they could measure this variability, the systematic risk, then they could develop a model to price assets using only this risk. To price assets means, to calculate the lowest minimum return based on market risk. The unsystematic risk or company unique risk is irrelevant, because it could easily be eliminated through diversification. To measure the amount of systematic risk an asset has, they regressed the returns for the market portfolio against the returns for an individual asset. The slope of the regression line, beta, measures an asset's systematic or non-diversifiable risk. It is a measure of the sensitivity of an individual stock's returns to changes in the market. In general, cyclical companies like auto companies have high betas, while relatively stable companies like public utilities have low betas. To calculate beta, we regress the market returns against the company returns. Y-axis represents company returns, while X-axis represents market returns. The slope of the regression line is beta. Mathematically, beta is calculated based on delta Y over delta X, simply speaking, the change in Y over the change in X, you will get the beta. The following are the meaning of beta. A firm that has a beta equals 1 has average market risk. The stock is no more or less volatile than the market. Volatile means risky. A firm with a beta greater than 1 is more volatile than the market, for example, technology firms. A firm with a beta smaller than 1 is less volatile than the market, for example, utilities. When beta equals 0, that's when firm's return equals risk-free rate. When beta is positive, the firm's return is moving together with the market return. When beta is negative, the firm's return is moving in opposite with the market return. Let's look at this table. There are two companies with very low beta, Anheuser-Busch and Pepsi, both companies are from beverage industry. They have a low beta because they are less risky. But Yahoo has the highest beta, showing that internet and technology industry is more risky. The beta of a portfolio can be estimated by considering the betas of the individual component assets in the portfolio. According to the formula, portfolio beta is calculated based on the summation of weight of asset times beta of asset. Let's put it into calculation. Beta of portfolio V is 1.20, while the beta of portfolio W is 0.91. Portfolio V has higher beta than portfolio W, which means portfolio V is more responsive to the market, which means it is riskier. After estimating the beta, which measures a specific asset or portfolio's systematic risk, estimates of the other variables in the model may be obtained to calculate an asset or portfolio's required return. This is what we call the capital asset pricing model, CAPM. According to the formula, required return equals to risk-free rate plus market return minus risk-free rate times beta. The required return for all assets is composed of two parts, the risk-free rate and a risk premium. The risk-free rate, RF, is usually estimated from the return on T-bills. The risk premium is a function of both market conditions and the asset itself, as shown in the formula of risk premium. The risk premium for a stock is composed of two parts. The market risk premium, which is the return required for investing in any risky asset rather than the risk-free rate, as shown in the formula of market risk premium. Beta, a risk coefficient, which measures the sensitivity of a particular stock's return to the changes in market conditions. Let's take an example. Calvin wishes to determine the required return on asset Z, which has a beta of 1.5. The risk-free rate of return is 7%, the return on the market portfolio of assets is 11%. Substituting beta 1.5, risk-free rate 7%, and market return 11% into the CAPM, it yields a return of 13%.
This is the required return. Here are some comments on the CAPM. The CAPM relies on historical data, which means the betas may or may not actually reflect the future variability of returns. Therefore, the required returns specified by the model should be used only as rough approximations. The CAPM also assumes markets are efficient. Although the perfect world of efficient markets appears to be unrealistic, studies have provided support for the existence of the expectational relationship described by the CAPM in active markets, such as the New York Stock Exchange, NYSE. Let's look at another example. The management is considering buying one of the two portfolios of assets, A or B, and has been given the following data. Calculate the expected return of each portfolio. Which provides the largest expected return? So based on the formula, you will get the expected return for portfolio A equals 21%, while the expected return for portfolio B equals 24%. Therefore, Portfolio B provides the largest expected return. Next part of the question, now the management wishes to assess which portfolio has performed better on the basis of CAPM. They estimated betas for A and B of 1.2 and 1.8 respectively. Risk-free rate is 8%, market return is 18%. Using CAPM, identify which of the two portfolios has performed better. Using CAPM formula, you will get the required return for A is 20%, while required return for B is 26%. So based on CAPM, portfolio B performed better. Let's compare the required return to the expected return we just calculated. For portfolio A, required return 20%, expected return 21%. It means, portfolio A overperformed. The expected is higher than the required. For Portfolio B, required return 26%, expected return 24%. So Portfolio B underperformed. The expected is lower than the required. As a conclusion, when the required return is smaller than the expected return, investors should buy or accept the investment. Very likely, stock price may rise in the future. When the required return is greater than the expected return, investors should sell or reject the investment. Very likely, stock price may decline in the future. Alright, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.